Good afternoon, everyone. It's a pleasure to be back at City Health. This is, I think, my fourth uh, City Health conference. Um, thank you, uh, Paddy, Jerry. Thank you to Professor Fabian to, for the invitation to introduce Ruth Wright, who is today. Um, she tried to discourage me to do so. Uh, but I take it uh, truly as a privilege, uh, an honor and um, an opportunity to express uh, both my respect and affectionate friendship. Um, I think no other person uh, could better than Ruth uh, in here in Switzerland uh, be placed to deliver this uh, Alison, Cheney and uh, Eddie uh, Killer and Memorial Lecture. As many of you would know, uh, it is under Ruth's guidance and leadership uh, during the 10 years or so when she has been Minister of Health slash Social slash internal affairs here in Switzerland that um, the uh, four pillar drug policy was established and then uh, implemented. Uh, a four pillar drug strategy that is now an, an example and uh, um, something that every country seeking uh, to approach the issue of drug pro policy in a progressive way is, is, is considering. And it is because of Ruth's uh, work and because of the legacy she left to the Swiss government that here today in Switzerland uh, we have basically the best, the broadest offer for harm reduction services um, I think than anywhere else in the world. And, and that offer was also provided to people before any other country would do so in the world. That offer is needle exchange. That offer is opioid agonist maintenance therapy. That offer is safe injection rooms. That offer is heroin substitution therapy for those in need. That offer is empowerment of users. That offer is also drug testing on sites of, of consumption. Uh, and that offer for services was designed, it was explained to people, it was democratically adopted by the people, and it eventually has been implemented, which is quite a remarkable story and a lesson uh, for all of us. Um, however, uh, Ruth's achievements uh, should not just be reduced to harm reduction and uh, advances in drug policy. I have no time, and that's not purpose of this conference to address that, but you should know that she has been absolutely key in introducing what in contemporary terms we call universal health coverage here in Switzerland. She's been key in promoting pension schemes, She's been key in bringing maternity leave uh, facilities to people, something that is dear to her heart and in a country that has not been the most progressive when it comes to gender uh, policies. And of course, um, the interesting thing also about her story is that Ruth is, uh, I think that I understand the first person who sort of jumped from one day to another for bring the, being the head of a major trade union association to becoming a minister the next day, part of the so-called Federal Council. And as I'm sure everyone knows, Ruth was the first woman here in Switzerland to become president of the Confederation. Um, in more recent years, and now, Ruth is... Uh, continuous commitment to social justice continues, of course. 
She is an active member of the International Commission Against Death Penalty, and she has been since the beginning um, a uh, colleague on the Global Commission on Drug Policy, where I have the pleasure um, to, to work with her. Ruth has now been the chair of this commission since uh, June 2016. And uh, many of the messages from the commission and many of our reports, uh, I think, are somewhere in the background of discussions happening here at, at City Health. And Ruth is really working in very much in the themes of, of the broader themes that are being discussed here at City Health International. In the last months, having the privilege of seeing Ruth, you know, every week, I've seen her engaged, engaging um, with a lot of energy into a promising uh, new pension legislation in Geneva uh, with the Socialist Party. Uh, I've seen her supporting um, a new initiative that Geneva took to um, facilitate uh, life of people who've been resident for quite some time in Geneva but had illegal status, if I may say that you have an illegal status, but who were illegally present. Uh, and she is, um, I think, the chair, are you the chair of a commission uh, that is um, on, on cannabis uh, as Geneva with Basel and uh, Zurich and Bern will be one of the four, country, four cities in this country experimenting uh, new ways of, of legalizing uh, cannabis. Um, so you can easily um, see what sort of person, what sort of wonderful person Ruth is, uh, a, woman, a woman of uprightness uh, who, is, who has remarkable attention to people, who is remarkably open to the world, and that whose continuous attention has been on the most vulnerable, on equity, on social justice, on human rights, on the fundamental liberties and, and democracy. So Ruth, we're looking very much to listening to you today. Thank you. That was a little bit too much. Thank you, Michelle. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, dear allies in the struggle to make society more healthy. Let me first of all congratulate the organizer of the sixth International City Health Conference for this great opportunity to connect and exchange experiences. And let me congratulate the recipient of the Paolo Portpertica Award, Ingrid Van Beek. I, am, I was very impressed about what I learned about what you are doing in, in your country, and I think uh, really that the country can be measured uh, by the situation it gives uh, in the jails of this country. And uh, trying to change the situation of the prisoners is, I think, one of the most important things. Also in Switzerland, when we began to develop a needle exchange in, in the jails and uh, uh, OST in the jails, we had to explain uh, that this was our responsibility because taking the freedom to protect themselves to the people because they are in uh, a jail <coughs> makes, us more makes us more responsible about their health and their possibility to uh, be able to protect them. So, congratulations. It is an honor and a pleasure to be invited to address such an important, deeply committed, and highly knowledgeable audience, and to do so remembering Alisa, uh, Alisa Chesney and Eddie Kiloram, pioneers in harm reduction and new forms of treatments dedicated to restore the dignity of drug users and fighting against their discrimination. The city. The city is the place where everything comes together. 
everything and everybody. The people, either those who live there or those who commute for working, purchasing goods, attending cultural and other events. The city attracts, not only by its lights, but often also by its shadows, people who have little connection with the large majority of well-integrated inhabitants. In German, we used to speak about A cities, Städte A, because they accommodate proportionally more Alte Menschen, old people, Ausländer, foreigners, Arbeitslose, jobless people, and I could add addicts on alcohol or illicit drugs. That means that it is the place in which arbitrages have to be done in order to deliver to the different segments of population what they need. The place in which the main contradictions of society collide and in which the social norm system and its translation in laws have to be practically and daily implemented, even if they are, in fact, incompatible. Didn't we all learn these realities facing the issue of drugs? We are not the cities at the front line when the HIV AIDS epidemic spread first among vulnerable groups. Were they not the first to explore new strategies? In order to safeguard not only the health of those most at risk and their relatives, but also the safety of all inhabitants, the quietness of their neighborhoods, the possibility to live side by side, respecting the different choices and the different ways of life. End of the 80s, you forgot this, Michel, but perhaps you didn't know, I was a member of the city parliament of Bern, the capital of Switzerland. She was, and still is, a quiet little town, mainly devoted to administration and services, quite conservative. The first steps in dealing with an increase in drug use and its social and medical consequences, the drop-in, the night asylum, the first steps to make visible the people who were at risk, were um, supported, contributed to the visibility of the problems and prepared the population to support new approaches. The open scenes of drug which were also open scenes of deal, the so-called needle parks, were tolerated by the population, aware about the necessity of establishing the contact with people in need of safe injection material and first aid services. A police which was present, but not harassing the users, prevented violence and helped to keep a separation between the cannabis and alcohol corner and the heroin place. The world's first supervised consumer room opened in 1986 in Bern and swiftly proved its efficacy in the reduction of overdoses and of the spread of transmissible diseases. In Zurich, the control of the open scenes, which were more violent, more degrading and far more bigger than those in Bern, had become difficult, the control had been, become difficult to fulfill and the consequences were uh, clearly det detrimental for the safety and the quality of life of the inhabitants of the neighboring areas. Before thinking about closing the last needle park, a uh, disused wretch railway station, not very far from here uh, in, in Zurich, it became necessary to offer alternatives to those who were trapped within it by their addiction. Low threshold methadone programs and heroin assisted therapy. If Switzerland could build on a long experience in methadone substitution therapy, heroin had never been used for this purpose and the narcotic law had not scheduled it as medicine. The city of Zurich was facing two problems. The reluctance of the canton to accept the city's project and to refrain from policing, in fact because the political majorities of the canton and the municipal level were opposed, and second, 
the necessity to obtain a special authorization from the federal authority to proceed to a scientific experiment of the medical prescription of heroin. The city couldn't act on its territory without green lights from the canton and from the central government. Meanwhile, I had finished my term in the city's parliament of Bern, and I had been elected a year later into the Swiss government, receiving, uh, among others, the responsibility for the federal public health, notably the responsibility for the narcotic, the enforcement of the na narcotic law. I could, <clears throat> my predecessor, uh, and I, I want to pay tribute to him, had, having paid the way to realize this uh, scientific experiment of heroin prescription, I could implement it on a large scale, large enough to absorb more or less all those who previously lived day and night in the open scene. Not only the contact with them didn't get lost, which was a great fear when, uh, open, uh, when the open uh, scene were closed, our fear was that the people would go back into uh, hide, hidden places, into, into underground, but uh, thanks to these measures, we could keep the contact with them. The services offered were more than mo just substituting illicit heroin with legal one. It was leading towards less criminal activities, less prostitution, better health, and less social marginalization. The federal intervention was also aimed at creating a platform of collaboration between the three levels of authority, the central state, the canton, and the municipality. As I told before, there was at the beginning a conflict and a tension between the canton and the municipality. We wanted to have this platform of collaboration between the three levels in order to create a common ground in drug policy and to open the possibility of more harm reduction and treatment offers. A common ground largely open to the non-governmental organization who inspired most, if not all, of the previous steps. And they still do inspire further steps. This kind of collaboration between the three levels of power was a novelty in Swiss politics. In this federal state, the national authority has only one kind of interlocutor, the cantons. And the federal state has only the competences explicitly delegated to him, the cantons being in charge of all remaining tasks. They are sovereign in the organization of the internal delegation of power, what means that they, uh, that they decide what the municipality can do or have to do, and there is no direct connection between the latter, the municipality, and the central administration. The drug emergency in the cities showed the need to bring at the same table all the stakeholders. It became clear that the cities were the place where the incoherences between the repressive approach of the, and the public health and safety objectives had to be overcome in first line. By reducing the pressure of policing, by opening safe consumption facilities, by offering drug checking services and developed social approaches such as jobs, occupation, and housing opportunities, this grassroots initiative were and still are key for the progress of reforms. Cities are the real labs of drug policy and they create the evidence on which to build a new approach and eventually a new legislation. After several popular votes on cities, cantons, and federal level, the overhaul of the narcotic law recognized the four pillar response, harm reduction, uh, prevention, treatment and uh, preven uh, prevention, treatment, harm reduction, and repression still. And I must say here that these four pillars 
idea or model is uh, valid not only for illicit drugs, as it is uh, the matter here, but of all dangerous, uh, dangerous substances and uh, uh, behaviors. There is always a part uh, to de devoted to uh, repression, think just about the age at which you can sell alcohol or tobacco to children. You have also in uh, the licit markets the part given to repression, but you have also the part given to prevention, uh, treatment, and harm uh, reduction. So, um, our, the main contradiction, because I don't want to make here a speech of uh, self-satisfaction, on the contrary, because there is a lot to do uh, in front of us. The main contradiction between a prohibition narcotic law and the spectrum of services allowing a safe or a safer consumption remains. Even if the consummation is no longer considered as a crime, uh, but is uh, infringement punished by a fine, it remains forbidden in my country. Even in some cantons, even if in some cantons the opportunity to, to pursue the drug uh, consumption and even the dealers does not, uh, op uh, this opportunity uh, allows not to pursue these people, it is still in the law forbidden. Today, as one could hear it yesterday in the workshop number six, once again, the cities are at the forefront of reforms. The call for decriminalization and regulation of cannabis is on the agenda, thanks to the city initiative. The pilot projects that are in preparation in Bern, Basel, Zurich, and Geneva, followed with a great, great interest by smaller cities, brings us back to the 90s, when the canton might oppose and the central administration should grant a special authorization for a scientific experience exploring different ways of regulation of cannabis. The total de uh, decriminalization of drug use of all drugs is still not seriously discussed in the political uh, fora, even if it would be the logical consequence of a harm uh, reduction strategy. Your conference is placed under the three calls for empowerment, engagement, and partnership. These three words are key. The empowerment, we should intend it as an empowerment of the users. An empowerment and the collaboration with the NGO working at the forefront and empowerment also of the municipalities. I explained before that the municipalities need to be more empowered in order to be more listened by the two levels that are above them and allowed to make experiences that can uh, open the way to necessary uh, reforms. You speak also about engagement. This engagement must be at the side of the population and the whole population, both, both the most vulnerable but also the best integrated. In a panel I had two or three weeks ago, a participant who is a high official of the uh, UNODC, uh, and skeptical about uh, my theme about regulation of the drug market, asked me if I aim to help to be helpful only for a tiny minority of problematic users. My answer was very clear. No, I think that a policy of public health aiming to integrate all the people in the city and in the society is good for everybody and not only for this uh, minority. And this is also my experience because as long 
as we abandon the drug users, let's say, for instance, in the open scenes, as it was more or less the case, it was the whole city that was suffering uh, from uh, this uh, unsolved problem. And to finish, your third call is for partnership. Partnership seems for me to be one of the most important things to organize. It isn't spontaneous. Partnership must be built together uh, with all stakeholders. I spoke about the very important role. I didn't speak enough about the very important role of the NGOs, of the people, activists who went at, uh, to discover, I would say, uh, the people who were uh, vulnerable and needed another policy. But it is also uh, a call for a partnership between all levels of power. Uh, it must be also a partnership between the countries and between the cities um, in, uh, uh, beyond their borders in order to create like-minded uh, groups that are able to influence the international uh, level of uh, regulation, which is, as we heard also in the session just before, uh, one of the most uh, one of the great obstacles uh, to, to reform. Let me end with a call for organizing a network of like-minded cities. You are here uh, such a network, a network of people being active directly on the ground at the grassroots level and uh, trying to organize and to influence uh, the political authorities. As a former political, uh, let me say that uh, I think we need also to convince the authorities of uh, the cities, I mean the mayors, for instance, to coalize in order to make their voice be heard, not only in their country, but also on the international level. The experience of the cities are the experience that can change the way to see how the people can live together in health and in security. Thank you for your attention.